Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson. I'm very happy to have you here with me today. Today we're going to go over some of the expressions that nobody actually mentions and I think they are very beneficial. They are they're called the meta, the meta expressions. You will find them inside of N8N. Uh, and today I'm going to show you some of the most important ones that you would might use and you would find very beneficial. All right, so I'm going to jump right in. Okay, so we have this workflow. It's just a test node here for us to test things in here. So I have a manual trigger, and you would know it's a trigger by first the lightning bolts and then the shape of the node. It's a bit rounded on the left side of it, right? So this signals that it's the first node. So it's a node that triggers or that starts the workflow, okay? It can be manual, it can be on a webhook, it can be on a a schedule for this case we're testing and when when we're testing we're always choosing the manual because we want to see things in canvas okay so you can execute from here from here and make sure to save and you cannot activate a manual you can only test it but you can have several triggers inside of the same workflow for example you can have a schedule and you can have a manual one all right, so let's connect our first manual trigger to this node, and then let's go to the edit fields. Now I have here a just a, a test variable called test one. It's a string, so it's a text. Now there's a lots of types of variables. I advise you to check out my full course on N8N. You can find it on my channel here. If you go to here, it's called N8N full course six hours. Just I go through lots and lots of nodes and lots of basic concepts. Okay, so let's see how do we access the those meta expressions. So first of all, in order to change this to expression, you can click here or you can click on equal. It will just turn it like a shortcut. It's an easy way. Second thing, you want to open two brackets. And once you do that, it opens this menu here where you can select things. Now, what I want to go is to the metadata. Here are some of the expressions and variables that nobody mentions, and I think they're very valuable and very useful, all right? So let's start with the execution. If, if I click on the execution, you can see here we have lots of, it's an object with lots of key value pairs. Now, if I click ID, now, this tells me I first need to execute this in order to start. So let's execute this. And now it's executed and it tells me the ID of the execution. So this execution, this run, it has an ID. And every run that you have on your, on your init and instance has an ID. Okay. So let's go to another one here. So we said execution. Let's select execution again, see if there's anything here. So there's mode. So it returns a test. Okay. So this is a test mode because we're testing inside of the inside of the canvas. Now, one thing that is important is this resume URL. So this resume URL, it's a URL that you can use inside of this workflow in an in a wait node. Let me explain. So if I go to the wait node here and I click, now you can, of course, the wait node, the standard use case of it is that you would wait seconds or minutes or you could define here and that's it. But there's actually options here, right? And there's one called on webhook call. And what this does is this node will wait until a webhook is called. And this is very beneficial because sometimes you want a workflow to wait until you prepare something or until you have certain variables or until you something some uh, like you need it to stop until something happens and this is a great way right uh, you can put it on webhook call and what is that webhook what is that webhook is you can you can get it from here if you click execution ex resume url and you tell me filled at if if i execute this now it gives me the actual webhook that I should be calling. Okay. So that's one. Let me save. Restart. And let's 
try something else. So let's see what we can try other than execution. So we said execution here. Now there are lots of other stuff that you can go through here. Input, we already know it's the input from the older data. What What is getting inputted in here? Parameters, we already know. Previous node, this gives you information about the previous node. So if I click here, because it didn't run yet, let's run it. So now if I have previous node, if I click, now, now you can see it's an object. Now the previous node, we can get the name of the previous node, which is it's called when clicking execute workflow we can have the run index and the output index up level. so lots of information about the previous nodes in case we want to know more information about it so what else so run index this is important because i will show you how this is important so here we have a here we have a workflow with, with a loop right and here I have a simple array with three items and a split to make it to make the whole workflow work. So if I run this, you can see we have an array and then I split that array. We have now three items. Now the loop will work three times. Okay. Okay. Grab this. Okay. So now it will work three times. So if I execute the workflow now, it does it three times. Okay. And if I go here and I'm going to show you the run index because it's important. I used it in several of my workflows. So run index. Now, this run index is basically, let me run this again. It's basically giving you. So now if, if I run the workflow now and I go to this node. And you can see here the run index is two. And the reason why it's two, and if you can see, then the first one was zero, the second one was one, and the third one was two. So it's it's zero based, so it starts the first run. So because it's a loop knob, it will it will do it the number of times we have items here. So we have three items, so this will loop three times, taking each item every time. All right? So it took the first item first, it ran it, and second item, and the third item. And each one, each time we're saying, this is the run index. So this is important, for example, if you have a workflow that you're doing, you're doing videos, you're doing files, you, you, and you want to increment, you want to know, okay, the file name will be this one, then the file name with this two, three. So this is a great way for you to have an increment with each time the loop runs. Okay, so this is a great way that I've used as well. Let's go back here, see if we can, if we need to do anything else. I think we need to cover workflow is uh, important as well. So workflow here, as you can see, gives us uh, lots of information about the workflow that we are here. So first of all, it gives us if the workflow is active or not, and the status is now false. The reason why is because we didn't activate the workflow here. Okay, so the workflow is not active. The second one is the ID, and that is available inside of the URL as well here. So it gives us the ID of the workflow. And then the last, it gives us the name of the workflow. All right. So this, this is the name of the workflow that you set in here. The name of the workflow. Okay, so these are the workflow variables that you can access within within your within your automation all right so i think these are the most important ones that i wanted to go over some of the ones that we already know but i think there's also this today it's the same thing that you would get from the now if you use now as well but now gives you the time as well right gives you also the time exactly now and this gives you only today's date, okay? Lots of uh, other ones as well. Node version is the version of the node that you're currently using. And now the edit field nodes is has a version of 3.4. I don't know if how that could be useful, but I never used it before. So this variable is, these are the variables that you create inside of N8N. 
if you go here, this section here, variables, you can create variables and you can access them from within the workflow or any other workflow that you have. There's also a, you can also add a community node called the global constant. I have a video about that as well, in case you don't have the variable, because this is only for pro uh, members of NITM. Okay, so, and then, yeah, we go, went on to, went over the most important ones. All right, so I hope this was beneficial to you guys. Some of these I use, especially the run index I use, the workflow I use, the previous node is very beneficial. So these are like hidden metadata variables and expressions that you can use that will ultimately be useful inside of your workflows. You don't know when they, they could be really beneficial and for you to know that they exist and for you to utilize them in your next workflows that you will do. I think it will add that bit of edge for you, that bit of utility for you that you become multifaceted in terms of the things that you can use in your workflows and automations. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next video.